The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode and I have here with me Jeanette Gauthier who is a service specialist with BASF. How is it going today? Good, yourself? So you are in Manitoba. What part of Manitoba are you in? So I actually cover western Manitoba up to the Parkland region and then uh, that's where I cross over with some other tech service specialists. Okay. So as we uh, really get into the fall season here, and I mean, some parts of the prairies are looking like the winter season, um, hopefully canola is getting off. Um, and if it's not off the field, it's very close to being off the field. So we're here today to talk about some of uh, BSF's end of season trials, as well as the importance of taking uh, plant stem counts. So what can you tell me about those things? So I would say despite the challenges that 2020 threw at us, it is nice to have trials off early. And so something that we do for our own trials is uh, we go in right after harvest and we do some plant uh, stand counts. And we do that. That's actually the second timing that we do it. And I think it's a really good opportunity. Um, It doesn't take long. Um, And if you're not sure how to do it, the Canola Council has some great videos but it's a really good opportunity to look at um, one of the things that can really drive what went wrong or what went right with your canola crop the past season. So what are you lo- what are you going to be looking for when you're out in the field and you're looking at those stems? So we're looking at uh, for like an optimal plant stand, which is around five to seven plants per square foot. Um, something that I did see this year in some of my trials even is that, uh, you know, we had some late se- seeding, um, soils were really warm, conditions were great, so we didn't adjust our survivability and we ended up with um, greater than seven plants per square foot. And while this didn't affect some uh, some of our plots, some of our plots did we did see lodging. And so I think lodging was something experienced by growers in different regions across the West. And for sure, plant uh, stand can be something uh, that's a contributing factor. And so it's good to look at that because if you have new equipment or maybe you were dealing with conditions that were a little bit different this spring, it's great to go back and look to see what your plant stands were to see if that was one of your contributing issues. On the flip side though, Maybe you did have an ideal plant stand. You were right with the, in that five to seven plants that we're looking for. And you still saw some lodging or maybe even some disease. Um, and that can be another good thing to identify because it usually indicates that there's probably something else going on in your crop other than just plant stand. So what sort of diseases could you be looking at um, if you're out there and you're looking at those stems post-harvest? I think one that we commonly talk about is black leg, um, something that's easy to look for once you're done harvest. Um, Sclerotinia can be another one that's easy to identify at that timing if if you didn't look a little bit earlier. Um, So for sure, that's something we do. We uh, take pull out some plants after harvest. It's nice and easy to walk in the field. You get to look at the stem, and then we do some clippings. So I have a stem here. Um, So I I think one of the important takeaways from this season is that often we do have some nice looking crop, nice green stems, and this year we are seeing a little bit more disease in some areas of the West, and I think it does span a good portion of the West, not just Manitoba. And so definitely doing those stem clippings and looking for that discoloration but then also linking it with some of the other black leg indicators. So it might not be easy to see here, but here we have some pycnidia. And the reason why I think this is important is because black leg is an important disease to identify, but it's important to identify it correctly because it can be a big yield robber. Um, But just because there's discoloration on your stem clippings or on your outer stem doesn't mean that you actually have black leg. So then how do you how do you tell for sure that you do have black leg? Ah, that's a great question. So 
I think knowing what some of the other diseases look like. So for Manitoba, and I did see it moving into areas where we haven't typically seen it before. Um, Verticillium stripe seems to be the newer disease that we're talking about. Also does cause some gray discoloration when you clip your stems. Um, and again, post-harvest can be great because then you get to see the microsclerotia. So very different looking and it peels back. Um, but sometimes if you go out a little bit early or your stems are still a little bit green, it can be really diffi difficult to distinguish those. So I did get asked that by an agronomist. And my answer is that's when you take advantage of your um, diagnostic labs in the provinces or with some of your other resources uh, like the Canola Council, for example. So why is it important that you are out in the field and you're looking looking for these diseases and evaluating your plant stand in the fall? I mean, like, especially plant stand, people tend to think, do it in the spring. You do it when you're looking, uh, when they're, when the cotyledons are out. But why, why is it important to do it now? I think this is the opportunity, uh, you know, you're harvesting or you're done harvest. You're thinking about what you're going to do for next year. So this is the opportunity to make some of those tweaks. Um, so if you, you know, your, your plant stand was a little bit high, maybe you did have lodging and then you got some disease in, you know, that that could be an easy fix. You know, you adjust your survivability numbers or you tweak your equipment. Um, if you are seeing disease, though, um, you know, if you have been growing, for example, the same hybrid, canola hybrid, like L252 or in vigor L233P, um, several times throughout your rotation, you know, it might be time to think about swapping those out if you are seeing diseases like black leg increase. Um, and then diseases that we are starting to see or that we did see a bit of this year. So it wasn't just verticillium. Uh, that was some of the other diseases. We did see some alternaria, so just optimal conditions this year, not something we always see in canola, um, as well as fusarium. You know, having those identified and then looking, you know, sitting down with the results and saying, um, you know, because it's not usually just one thing, it's usually compounding issues. So it's looking back on your season with the diseases you had and saying, was this an issue? So for verticillium, for example, there's nothing you can choose in your hybrid for next year. But you might note that it's something that's showing up in your fields. And, you know, we don't think it causes a yield drag, but it definitely reduces stock strength and can lead to lodging. So it might be something that a grower might say, I'm going to keep my eye on this. Um, might be the first field that I harvest that I straight cut, or I might consider swathing this. So just knowing what's out in your field can help you make some of those management decisions or just get you into that field more often the next season. Um, can you touch a bit on the importance of actually writing down what you're seeing, why it could be important in the next following years as well? Absolutely. And that goes for our trials too. Um, sometimes we get, uh, you know, I would say this year it was just looking like we were going to have an amazing crop and, um, you know, the yields just weren't quite where we expected them to be. And then so going back and looking at the season overall, when the moisture occurred, you know, there was definitely a lot of storm systems, maybe some hail, um, those big winds that didn't help. So looking back and making sure that you're able to maybe draw some conclusions uh, about what was happening in your crop can help the next time it happens. Because for sure, what you see in your field this year doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be the same thing next year. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add uh, when you're talking to producers about what happened uh -huh. this year? I think it's just a really good opportunity to plug some of those resources that we have. And again, um, talking to your seed company rep is a good one. Um, talking to your agronomist or if you, the grower, are the agronomist, reaching out for some of those other resources. So again, I mentioned some of them, those diagnostic labs, whether it's the provincial lab or the provincial specialist or, um, you know, some of the private ones and the Canola Council website. I think there's also a lot of opportunities in some of the provinces as well that they're offering um, some free testing. So definitely take advantage of that. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Oh, thank you. Thank you.